G'day and welcome to the episode. I'm Tim James and this is Island Life. In this episode, we're going to look at making a mini forge for knife making. Alrighty, let's kick this episode off. Uh, let's start with what I want to achieve here and then we'll circle back around and look at how we're going to do it. To start with, I want to get into knife making and I want to make a boning knife, that's my template, uh, for butchering pigs. I don't have a boning knife and I've been using other knives which has worked fine, but that's what I want to build. Now, circle back around to how we're going to do it. The first thing I need to do is get decent steel for knife making. Now I could use a really soft metal. This is a construction steel. Um, we use this for putting inside the walls. It's rebar in Australia here, they call it steel bar, but it's a mild steel. It's so mild, I can bend it with my hands. That's no good for knife making. So, if we look at the other end of the spectrum, you've got something like this, which is a file that is super hard steel. Uh, which would make a really good edge for cutting, but the problem is it's brittle. And if I hit this with the hammer or even just dropped it on the floor, that would snap or shatter. So that's no good. I mean, you, you can use it, but that's no good really for what I want to do. So that brings me around to this. This is a leaf spring out of a truck. As best as I can tell, this is probably a 5160 steel, which is a high carbon steel. Um, it has effectively like a memory. It returns to whatever shape it started out as. So that's why it's good for springs. Um, this is obviously an old rusty spring, uh, but around here I can't get 1080, 1084, 1095, which are the good steels for making knives um, because they're just unavailable in the Philippines. I sent out a heap of emails to a bunch of steel suppliers and all they've got is A36 steel, which is that mild construction steel. So, why do I know I can use this to make a knife? Because I already did it two years ago, but it wasn't me that did it. So I bought a spring from the same guy and I sent it up the island to a blacksmith and he produced this blade. Now, that is the same steel and it's what the locals use to make machetes or what they call a bolo. And it's a very industrial, knife or machete that we use for a range of different things around the, the property here. So that's been a really good knife. I like it. It's held a really good edge. I did snap the tip off once, um, so it is a little bit brittle, but that could have been the heat treatment process. It could be the steel. I don't know. But I do know, I've already done this once, but it just wasn't me that did it. Um, so this time around, I'm going to have a crack at doing it myself because I want to get into knife making. We've been working on this property for two years nearly now. I've built the house, this typhoon shelter, I mean I should have built the roof two inches higher because I'm six foot three and so is that. But um, we've nearly finished all of the construction work and I'm currently working on my workshop with the local lads that have helped us build all of this stuff. That's probably going to be two or three months, hence me working in the typhoon shelter um, now. So back to the steel. This steel is too hard right now. It would just, what's called skate a file. This file, it's just going to slide off it. It's not going to do anything to it. It's too hard. So what we can do is if we can get this up to a really high temperature, I can then shape it and I can then um, harden it again and it'll turn back into spring steel. But to get it up to the temperature I need it to, to beat at, which is called critical temperature, which is the point at which it becomes non-magnetic. So I'll get a magnet and I'll just keep tapping it with the magnet until it doesn't stick. And then I know it, and when it's like cherry red, I'll be able to start working this steel. But at the moment, I, it, I would spend all day working on this and I wouldn't get anywhere. So I need to build a mini forge, which is what you saw at the start of the video. Now we've obviously circled back, back around. I'm going to build it out of an old paint can and I'm going to use a wine bottle to give me a hole in the center. I'm then going to use an old piece of bamboo. I'll have to clean that up so it actually comes out. I'm going to punch a hole in the side here, put that through so that I can then take my blowtorch, which will be 
my heat source to then get the inside of this glowing hot and then put the steel in there and get it glowing hot. So this little torch probably won't have enough power. I've got another one there, but I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they are, I haven't got enough grunt and I might have to buy an actual uh, handheld blowtorch that'll hook up to a propane bottle, which is fine. I don't mind doing that. I just want to try it with this and see what kind of results we get. I don't think it's going to work, but got to start somewhere. The first thing is to make the forge. So what I'm going to do to make this little mini forge is I'm going to mix up plaster of Paris with some sand that I got at the just the beach out the front there. Um, and it's a really nice fine sand that I've filtered. I'm going to mix it one part plaster of Paris, one part sand, and then uh, one part water. And I'll pour it in here, let it set probably like four days. So it's definitely not got any moisture in it because any moisture when I start to heat this thing up could cause things to not work out well. So that's the plan. But the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some legs for the forge. So let's start there. Alright, I've been going about 30 minutes now and I'm definitely making a difference, even though that's mild still, it's still as a proof of concept, I'm happy. I'm going to need more um, BTUs, more power in this little forge to get it really working, but I think we're in business. I think I'll be able to uh, start forging and making knives, so I'll keep tweaking this and uh, hopefully eventually um, I get it dialed in and I can really start to enjoy a new hobby so in the meantime i hope you've enjoyed this episode if you have enjoyed the episode please click on the like button and hitting subscribe will help you find future videos that i post thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode bye